Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always Father of spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. So our Lord and Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizens, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among of you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool, so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord.
a man died and uh, being outside of the gates of heaven, uh, St. Peter asked him, why should you enter into heaven? And the man replies to Peter, to St. Peter, well, my hands are clean. And St. Peter replies and says, yes, but they're empty. We continue listening to the Sermon on the Mountain, the sermon that starts with the Beatitudes and that uh, continues with the words that the, of the Gospel that we heard last weekend and this weekend, just as a reminder, last weekend that Jesus was saying, if your righteousness does not surpass the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus uh, gave us some examples of, of, of those uh, phrases that we hear in the Gospel today. Uh, you heard that it was said, but now I say to you, Right? And last weekend, in, in the reflection from the homily, uh, we were contemplating that the Lord is calling us for a profession of the faith that comes from the heart. A profession of the faith that goes beyond external manifestations of the faith. Obviously, those external manifestations are important. It is important for us to come to church. It is important for us to experience the sacramental life of the church. It is important for us uh, to fulfill the commandments uh, uh, and the teachings of our faith. However, all of that without a heart that is open to love and serve, uh, a heart that uh, is the heart of a disciple, the heart that learns from Jesus, that walks into the path of holiness, then all those practices are empty. And so today's gospel uh, is a continuation of, of the sermon that Jesus is giving us, giving us, that our righteousness needs to surpass that of the scribes and the Pharisees. At the time of Jesus, uh, it was well known that saying that we also hear in the scriptures, uh, do not do to others what you wouldn't have them do to you, right? And, and that's kind of like a, a it, it's a good law, like the laws that, that we hear at the beginning of the gospel, you know, those, those are laws that are, are were set as, as ways for people to try to find harmony and to live in community. Even the law of, you know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was a way to refrain vengeance and retaliation. It was a way uh, to try to find justice in, in the midst of our, our lawless society. But that is not enough. As Jesus comes, not to erase the law, but to bring the law to its fulfillment, it is not enough not to do, to, 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 not to do bad things to others. Now the call for those who follow Jesus is not only refraining from doing evil, but to do good and to love. It is not enough refraining oneself to do evil, now the followers of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus are, are called to love as Jesus has loved us. It is not enough trying to be good, but now the Lord calls us in today's gospel to be perfect as the Father is perfect. And this perfection is not in, in our human understanding to understand perfection, but it is in an openness of the heart uh, to seek to imitate God, to seek to imitate Jesus. And I think that uh, this gospel that is so challenging, is challenging us uh, not only to get out of our comfort zone, but it's challenging us to be like Jesus because he is the model of perfection, that model of perfection who seeks the cross, that model of perfection who seeks a sacrifice, that model of perfection who is able to renounce to, to his own will, to do the will of God the Father. 
And it comes in a time in which we prepare ourselves to enter into a season that is spiritually charged, the season of Lent, a season that will call us to make an examination of our hearts to see how much are we working for that perfection, which in our Christian language is called holiness. And again, no saint was perfect in, in, you know, in, 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 a, in a human standard of perfection, but every saint has been perfect in the pursuit of the imitation of Christ, in trying to imitate Christ, in that effort to be an image of Christ for the other. So I'd like to invite you today to start thinking and, and prayerfully meditate on what is that that you can do, and I will do the same, uh, what is that that you can do as we enter into the season of Lent to help us not only to refrain ourselves from doing evil, but to actually uh, put our faith into motion and action, loving our neighbor as Jesus has loved us, being perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And I'd like to, to challenge you to, to make this coming, this upcoming Lenten season a unique Lenten season, uh, not like the others that you have lived in the past, to make this one uh, a greater and holier one, uh, the holiest season that you've had so far in your life. And here at St. Rose of Lima we have many wonderful uh, programs and opportunities uh, for us to grow in holiness. Uh, every Wednesday night we'll have our Holy Hour validation. Uh, that actually goes throughout the whole year. Every Friday night we're inviting you to join us to have a soup, a meatless soup downstairs at 6 p.m. And if you're able to come upstairs at 7 p.m. and join us for the, the reflection and the prayer of the Stations of the Cross. As we contemplate Jesus here in the cross, we learn how to be like Jesus. We learn how to carry the cross. And so that contemplation of, of the Lord's passion, uh, death and resurrection will strengthen us in our resolve to be holy uh, and to be perfect as God is perfect. As we uh, journey through the season, we'll be having our book club as an opportunity also uh, to open our hearts to love and our uh, faith sharing groups uh, that will also be meeting every week and, and opening their hearts to, to grow in the knowledge of God and in holiness. We'll uh, have our, our big event of the season as we celebrate our parish Lenten mission uh, with the, the title, A God Beyond Boundaries. We in our humanity, uh, we, we try to put boundaries even to the love of God and what God can do. And so that in our mission, uh, in, in the month of March, um, we're going we're gonna to listen to uh, Father Hugo kind of giving us those reflections about the God who is present, the God who is powerful, God who, who loves us beyond all our human boundaries. We'll also uh, get together with a group of volunteers to, to pack uh, 10,000 meals that will go to Africa uh, to help uh, people in need. Uh, and during the season, we're going to be uh, working towards that project. We'll have uh, uh, so many opportunities to, to, to pray with the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day, uh, receiving a reminder on our, on our cell phone. Uh, or pray the rosary on Thursday nights. And obviously, during the season, as we come to put the, our ashes on our foreheads, uh, and Sunday after Sunday, we'll have the opportunity to, to ask the Lord to give shape to our hearts, so that we recognize that it's not enough to have our hands clean. It's not enough to refrain ourselves from doing evil. Our faith calls us to put our faith into action, to do good, to do uh, the work of God uh, in our daily lives. 
And so may the Lord give us the grace to recognize that uh, the Lord calls us uh, so that our righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, that we're called to be loved, called to be perfect in the eyes of God. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God. Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of God, true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial to the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down of the <coughs> by the Holy Spirit, was the garment of the Virgin Mary, and the beginning of man. For our sake, he was crucified and the much despised. He suffered death and was buried, and it rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we heed the call for holiness, let us lift up our prayers to them. For the church, that we may live as God's holy people, manifesting God's love and compassion in this time and place to all who enter our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord our Lord. For our parish community, that we may recognize the spirit at work within and among us and work together to serve God's purpose. We pray to the Lord. For all who are recovering from earthquakes and other disasters, that God will relieve the pain and suffering of the people in Turkey and Syria, provide warmer weather, and speed the assistance which they need. We pray to the Lord. For Sasha Flynn, who will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in the Sacrament of Confirmation this weekend, that planted in faith and grounded in love, she bear witness to Christ the Lord with her life. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all the faithful departed, particularly Marilyn Drisco, for whom this Mass is offered, may they be raised up on the last day to live forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Well, let's also pray for it. Uh, Suzanne Jackson, who passed away this past week in her family, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, you have promised us the Holy Spirit to guide us on the journey of life. Give us the graces that we need so as to follow the path of discipleship in holiness. All of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and I invite Sasha Flynn to come forward. Uh, Sasha will be confirmed uh, tomorrow at St. Paul's Cathedral by our Bishop Lord McManus, uh, together with um, all the adults uh, seeking confirmation for the Daniel St. Worcester. Sasha has been sharing uh, in growing faith with our RCIA team, and we're very happy for you that the day has finally come for you to receive the sacrament of confirmation. So I invite you to please raise your hands as we bless Sasha and send her um, with our good wishes and blessings uh, for her confirmation tomorrow. Sasha, may the Lord who poured out the Holy Spirit upon his apostles in the church, may he pour out his Holy Spirit upon you to give you a spirit of knowledge and wisdom, spirit of uh, the love for the Lord, a spirit of service, a spirit of holiness, that the Lord in his spirit guide you on this journey of life and give you the gift 
of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we prepare our altar, our second collection will be taken for uh, the relief for the people of uh, Turkey and Syria after the hurricane that took place there a few weeks ago. Thanks for your generosity. As our gifts are presented and the altar is prepared, please join in singing our auditory hymn number 728, I Has Not Seen, 728. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. As we celebrate the mysteries of the Lord and with your servant, that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. Thank you. 
Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ to the Son as our Lord and Redeemer. You always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, that you care for your sons and daughters. And so with angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, as without them we acclaim.
Deliver us, Lord, as we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord of Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord to be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. We invite you to join in singing our communion hymn, number 945, I am the bread of life, 945.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pleaded to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. As I mentioned in the homily, there are multiple opportunities for us to continue growing in faith uh, during the upcoming Lenten season. We might, uh, just as a reminder, we will have in Masses on Wednesday with the distribution of ashes at 8.30, 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Also, uh, we're going to start something new in the parish, is the, the soup and stations. So we're inviting you to join us to have soup downstairs on Friday night at 7 p.m. This will be a meatless soup that you know, it will help us you know, with the spirit of the season and also to come together as a community and, 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 and lift the spirit of the season together. Uh, the soup will be downstairs, it will be served downstairs. Uh, we have various ministries of the parish preparing the soups and then uh, everyone is invited to come upstairs from the stations. Uh, you don't have to be in both in order to participate. Uh, if you're able to join us for both, that's wonderful. Uh, otherwise, you can join us for either soup or stations uh, on Friday nights. And also, as we make our, our connection uh, between our prayer, our fasting, and our almsgiving, we will be working together as a parish in preparation for the Rise, and, Rise Against Hunger project, which will allow us to pack about 10,000 meals that will go uh, to, to Africa, uh, to very poor communities. In order for us to be able to, to provide for these meals and all the logistics that it takes, uh, we need to raise some funds. So, uh, as you're invited to join us on Fridays for soup, uh, if you're able, uh, we'll ask that you make a donation. What would it cost you to prepare that meal? Uh, or if you were to come out, uh, you know, may, perhaps make that as part of the almsgiving of the season, and those funds that we recollect, that we collect, will go uh, to the Rice Against Hunger project um, that we'll be doing in the month of March. So please make sure you have uh, the bulletin with you. We are still inviting you to sign up for the book club and the face sharing groups, and also to receive the text message with a reminder of the Divine Mercy Hour at 3 p.m. every day. Uh, if you wish to receive that reminder, uh, we have the sign of sheets in the gathering space. The Lord will be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Great peace, glorify the Lord by your prayers. Thank you, God. Have a wonderful evening. Love you all. Thank you, Father. As we go forth to love and serve the Lord, please join in singing our closing hymn, number 835. They'll know we are Christians. 835.